Hi, I'm Campton Carter and I'm with ECTV. Today I'll be interviewing Professor Larry Reynosa, who is a self-defense instructor at Ventura College. Hi, thank you so much for coming in today. Would you mind telling me a little bit about yourself and what you do? Sure. Uh, thank you for having me and doing this interview. Um, as you mentioned, I'm an instructor here at Ventura College. I have been since 1978. By my math, that's about 45 years, uh, which makes me one of the oldest instructors here. But I, I continue to teach because uh, of the impact I have on students. And uh, I've uh, been practicing Aikido for about uh, 50 years and uh, here at the college for 45 of those years. I also have um, derived a self-defense assault prevention program that has also been successful here. I grew up in the Ojai Valley. I went to Nordoff High School. Uh, came to Ventura College, went to school here, and played football here. Uh, became an All-American middle linebacker, uh, which gets thrown back in my face quite often. But I'm still here and still standing. And uh, uh, I've also taught um, Western line dance for 15 years. And that was here at the college as well. And now, uh, so totally, I've been here for about 45 years, and they can't seem to get rid of me. <laughs> so here I am. <laughs> Um, so what drew you to become a teacher of Aikido? Well, I, I, I never really chose to be a teacher of Aikido. It just it kind of chose me. Uh, I actually began my study here at Ventura College. Uh, my first instructor actually was running an underground class here. The, uh, the gym was being opened up by the janitor, and we were doing an illegal program here. We finally got busted by my linebacker coach, Jerry Dunlap, and anyway, uh, in the next couple of years, we created a legal uh, beneficial program here uh, at Venture College, and uh, we've been teaching ever since. So uh, as my perspective and ideas started to grow because of uh, great teachers I was training with, uh, there were a lot of students that were also drawn to my ideas and my perspective. And as they say, the rest is history. <laughs> because my student following started to grow and so I just decided why not and so I've uh, uh, developed uh, I became a professional Aikido instructor by opening a professional dojo and we had that for 25 years unfortunately COVID killed that off is the one thing that we couldn't defend ourselves against and then uh, but I still have the Venture College program so uh, I've taught all over the world, uh, traveled around the world, teaching Aikido or self-defense assault prevention in one way or another, and uh, enjoyed that aspect of uh, my profession in, in the martial arts. Uh, so can you tell me what the word Aikido means? Aikido is a Japanese word. It literally is made up of three characters. The first character, I, means love or harmony. Uh, the second character, ki, means energy or, or life force. And do literally means a, a path that you set yourself upon. So loosely translated, I would translate it as a, a way of harmonizing with the forces of nature. And, uh, and in our world today, it doesn't matter where you stand, left, right, center, doesn't matter because we all have to deal with the outcome of whatever upsets are in the world. And so it, Aikido is a solution. It's something that we really need today. And if more people embraced Aikido instead of the more violent competitive martial arts, I think our world would be a better place. So what makes Aikido different from other um, martial arts? Well, as I mentioned, Aikido is a non-competitive martial art. You're never going to find me in, in some cage, you know, destroying the life of another person for the sake of money or, or fame or fortune. Uh, it, it, that serves no purpose in the world. And in Aikido, we work together in a non-competitive way, understanding that in the dojo, we're dealing with the theory of violence, the theory of what we might do in the event of a violent attack or an assault. And then we have to come up with solutions. And then practicing those solutions, you're practicing your body coordination, your mind, uh, mind and mental uh, capacity to process quickly and then to move in coordination with your mind and body. So, in fact, it, it becomes meditation, it becomes physical fitness, it becomes um, physical agility, all those things that we see in PE programs and all that, and all in one.
So the activity of Aikido is, is very valuable in that respect. So have you dabbled in any other martial arts? I, I get asked that all the time. <laughs> um, I really haven't formally trained in any other martial arts. But as I've traveled around the world, I, I had 13, I was supervising 13 dojos in Brazil. And it, it never seemed to fail that we'd get a lot of jujitsu students coming to my Aikido seminars to experiment and uh, on me and on my students and uh, <laughs> you know and so I trained alongside a lot of different martial arts but I would say that's probably the reason I've stuck to Aikido because I can see the failings of so many of the other martial arts that especially the competitive ones that uh, today it's a sad situation where we see uh, six-year-olds getting a black belt for instance in the old days, in my old days, when I, you talked about a black belt, the black belt was something that signified expertise. Uh, oh, wow, he's got a black belt. Well, now when a six-year-old's got a black belt, it's been reduced, it's been reduced to a marketing tool, mm -hmm. unfortunately. And, and that's been uh, progressively getting worse in many of the other martial arts because the martial arts studio's got to survive. And the only way they survive is they get parents to pay you money for tournaments. They get parents to pay you to give your their child a trophy and ultimately to give them a black belt. So unfortunately, black belt doesn't mean much anymore. And uh, so it's up to the individual to provide that perspective that will give value to the student instead of just being a marketing tool and making money for themselves. And um, that's why I love the college, because it's not about making money, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but there's great value there. So how would you say Aikido and self-defense coincide? Well, there's an old saying, Aikido abushido de aru. And what that means is Aikido is the way of the warrior. Now, there's a lot of traditionalists that would not would like you not to believe that, that Aikido is not about self-defense. It's about love and peace and harmony. And I said, okay, well, I understand that. You know, I get that. I'm about love, peace, and harmony too. But how does peace and love and harmony exist when you have a petite woman with a knife to the throat or to your sister or daughter being raped in the corner of the room? How do you incorporate harmony and peace then? Because if I can't stop the person from cutting my throat, I'm dead. I can be a nice person and still be skillful in avoiding being stabbed, shot, hit with a brick, hit with a piece of pipe, strangled, beat to death. Do you understand? Yes. That's the value of Aikido because we can do that without competition, without needing to beat each other up. Training can be difficult. It can be hard. And it takes a lot of work and time. But that's what we call shugyo. Shugyo is the dues that one has to pay for that skill. Because if you're not skillful, if you can't stop a rapist, a rapist will kill you. They will rape you first, and then they'll probably kill you. Right? They don't want any witness. So uh, you have to understand, peace and harmony can only come from having the ability not to be harmed. And so you, you have to create a balance between the... The, the combative skills that you learn and the mental attitude you have in life. Because many, uh, as you, I'm sure your viewers have seen, that when you view these MMA guys in the cage, I mean, they're nothing but rowdy, you know, rah-rah, macho guys. And even to the point of, you know, seeing the female uh, WWF, you know, uh, fighters out there. It's all about machismo, strength, power, looking good, and all that kind of stuff. And people get inspired by those people. You know, they're entertainers. But they're creating something that's a complete fantasy. Now, they're good athletes, and anybody that says it's not real, it's real. But it's choreographed. And it's make-believe, in a sense. It's, there's no malicious intention. There's working together, like you would in Aikido. You'd work together. And it's hard work. These people that do WWF, for instance, you know, the, uh, the entertainers, the, it takes a lot of work to do what they do. And there's a lot of skill involved. But what practical purpose does that have in our world for the layperson, for the petite woman like yourself? How does that help you to get into a, a, a ring with a 
350-pound guy. You know, way back when, when they did the, <clears throat> back in the 70s, I think, when Billie Jean King took on Bobby Riggs in a tennis match to prove that women's equality were equal, uh, Billie King, Jean King cleaned house on Bobby Riggs. Well, that was a ridiculous match. But another match they had was the top taekwondo contender female and the top taekwondo contender male. And they got in a match, and they were going to have a match all by the same rules. Evie Stevie, you know, men against women. How long did that match last? One kick. They carried the woman out on a stretcher. There's no way when power comes to power, bigger power is going to win. It's just a fact of life. That's why even in today's, you know, world that we're having trouble making it fair to compete because of rules. Well, in Aikido, there are no rules. You know, in life, there are no rules. There's laws, but criminals don't care about the rules. They're, they don't care about the laws, right? Because, say, for instance, a, a, a rape victim gets a restraining order against the person that raped her or the person, a husband that abused her. She takes out a restraining order. That's a law. You can't come close to me. But in so many instances where that same woman got that restraining order, the next day she was killed because that sent the guy over the edge. And that's, that's the purpose of our program, to be able to avoid that. You know, a piece of paper is not going to save you. Your hand-to-hand -hand skills will save you, can save you. All that you mentioned, would you say that's pretty much why self-defense is so important to learn? Absolutely, because there's just far too many people that don't have the capacity to defend themselves, quite literally. And, you know, it's just like life. When I say Aikido wa Bushido de Aru, Aikido is Bushido. Aikido is a combative method of defending yourself. That's why there are no rules. We don't, put it, we don't make it competitive because think of any competitive thing that you do. There's rules, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in life, there's no rules. So if you get, if you practice in a dojo or, or martial way or anything, military, and you create rules, rules of engagement, for instance, let's just take that, because there are rules that the, you know, like in Ukraine and, and, and Russia right now, you know, they're fighting, they're, they're battling. But then just recently, there was a drone strike on the Kremlin. And then they're saying, that's unfair. What are you talking about? You're at war. There are no rules in war. War is life or death. Kill them before they kill you. That's what war is. And people don't want to admit that. And then they want to play war. That's not a play war. People are dying. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how we approach it in Aikido. You have to, you have to pay attention to the reality that we live in. So one of the, my goals in, in training, even at Ventura College, and it used to be at my dojo, I wanted all my students to come away with a, a good perspective on, like I said, the theory that you practice with and the reality you live with. There has to be a back and forth. You have to be able to take whatever you do in the studio out into the real world. Because if you can't do that, then there's no point in doing what you're doing in the studio. There is no point to what I do other than if I was in it for the money then, unfortunately, that's how many of the martial arts are surviving today. It's all about the money. It's not about the value of what it gives the student. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, that's the true value of what we're doing in Aikido. Or any, and it doesn't have to be Aikido. It, and like I said, my self-defense assault prevention class is a derivative of my experience in Aikido. I created self-defense assault prevention at Ventura College out of a way of saving my classes, simply because before the self-defense assault prevention program at Ventura College, I taught four Aikido classes. It was very popular. I was, on, I was the only game in town. I had 100 students in every class. It was ridiculous. But as more in, uh, martial arts got introduced into Ventura College, jiu-jitsu, uh, karate, uh, kung fu, stuff like that, uh, then my numbers, of course, leveled out, you know, to a more reasonable number. But at the same time, uh, the value went down, too, because it was more diluted. So, you know, that, that's important to me, and that we continue to keep that value. Yeah. So when it comes to your Aikido-based self-defense and assault prevention class, why is defense against yourself a step in self-defense? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, <clears throat> again, like I said, I created the self-defense program out of the Aikido program in order to defend my program against people that would want to cancel me. I, I had to save the program because I knew the value of it, mm -hmm. right? So when I begin a semester and I tell people, okay, now you're in a self-defense assault prevention class, but self-defense begins with defense against yourself. The main reason people don't want to do that, I mean, people have problems today is because they don't believe in themselves. They don't have the, the courage to make a good choice. They don't have the creative thinking to make good choices. And you make, and how important is it to, in today's society to make the right choice? Life and death. People are dying because they're making the wrong choice. One, run one needle stick, one, one pill, one shot. One, people die. So it's really important to understand that and keep that in perspective. So when you have observed other self-defense classes, what have you noticed that could be improved? Well, uh, their, their big failing is that they tend to be competitive. Mm -hmm. And as soon as, like I said before, once you make it competitive, you create rules because you, rules of engagement. And once you have to, once you create that behavior based on rules, then it becomes, it doesn't become as effective in real life because in real life there are no rules. We have laws, but in warfare there's no rules. I mean, kill or be killed, you know, mm -hmm. defend yourself or not. It's just the way it goes. And so, again, like I said, that's the reality that we incorporate into my kind of training. And whether you want to call it Aikido, self-defense, self-prevention, I, I like to call Aikido sometimes any dough, you know, any dough. Create, give me something better and I'll do that, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be just Aikido. Aikido is a great path to travel into. But if, I, if you put Aikido in the wrong hands that with somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about or they, they want to take the fast track and they want to get their black belt by somebody that says, oh, well, I really like you. I think I'll give you a black belt. You know, put the uniform on and put the stripes on and you've got a black belt. But you have nobody, somebody that doesn't know what they're really doing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So that's the problem today I see in so many of the martial arts, especially coming back from COVID, because COVID literally killed the martial arts industry because we're all hands on. So social distancing doesn't work, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So a lot of the studios are now just recovering from that. But even at that, people are still living with the fear of COVID. And, and fear is a monster, a monster deal to deal with, you know. Uh, I know one of your questions is about Gavin DeBecker's book, The Gift of Fear. I don't know if that's where you're going next. But uh, Gavin DeBecker wrote a book called The Gift of Fear that I use as a resource in my classes because it gives a student, a reader, insight into their own fear. What do you fear? Now, fear can be a gift. It can be a curse. It can be a gift because, it, you know, when you're in fear, then you do something. You're scared into action. Whereas it can also be a curse. It can stop you from doing that. And so that's one of the things that you asked before as far as the martial arts and the problem with the problems that I see in other martial arts systems is that many people in Aikido, unfortunately, want to train in a more user-friendly environment. They don't want to delve into the combative aspects of martial arts, you know, the fighting arts. Mm -hmm. They want to keep it about peace and love and harmony and movement and, and balance and pat each other on the back and give out black belts and, and live that kind of life. But as I said, sometimes that just doesn't make sense. And when you read Gavin DeBecker's book, The Gift of Fear, and you realize how fear can control and paralyze somebody into compliance, into non-action. And if you stop fighting, you die. If you're, you know, uh, someone uh, is being sexually assaulted, uh, they stop fighting, they get assaulted, they die, they, they get raped, they get molested. Uh, kids nowadays, they, uh, you give a six-year-old a, a black belt and they're assaulted by some psychotic adult and they're going power to power, he's got a black belt. He's going to think they're going to, with that black belt, I have the power to defeat this adult psychotic. Power to power, he's going to lose. 
He punches the guy. The guy punches him. Who's going to win? The kid ain't going to win. He'll be lucky if he does. But he'll stand and fight. One of my six-year-olds will run. I teach them to run. And they can always outbeat some gigantic psychotic. (laughs) (laughs) They can hide through a barrel, run around trash cans. You know, that's what Mm -hmm. I teach them. So would you mind sort of describing like your typical lesson plan for a semester? Well, at the beginning, as I said, first we've got to create the language of communication, mm-hmm. right? And you know where I started this semester with you. I started with understanding language and how powerful negative and positive language is, right? And I start by doing what I call the try lesson and getting the student to understand that there are words in our language, in the English language, that take power away or destroy an integrity. When you think about the little word try, so many people use the word, well, try this, and I try. Just try it, Johnny. Just try it, Johnny. Well, that's not about Johnny trying anything because you cannot try. You know, there's no try. If I give you a little demonstration, if, if I put something in my hand and I asked you to try to take this from my hand, oh, people would take it. And I said, no, no, no. I didn't say take it. I said try to take it. Oh, I said, why well, I'm trying to take it. No, no, you're taking it. I want you to try to take it. And then they go, oh, and I put the hand over it and go, oh, and I go, well, and he says, well, I'm trying. No, you're not. You're putting your hand over it and going, oh, right? You're not, that's what you're doing. Well, no, I'm trying to take, no, you're not trying to take it. You can't try to take it. There's no try in that. Try is a word that was created, born out of a fear of failure. People use it. Well, I tried, don't blame me. I tried. When mommy says to Johnny, just try, Johnny, just try. That's about mommy not being embarrassed by that kid. It was my kid. You get out there and do your best. I don't care if you fail. Go fail 10 times. Heck, failure may be the best thing that ever happened to them. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Spoon-fed kids and and they get everything they want. Spoiled kids, they get everything. They've never worked a day in their life for whatever. They, They haven't failed. They haven't been given the experience of failure. Failure is only bad if it, when you're dead, you know. Well, no, fail to stay alive. Okay, that could be bad. You're not even going to be mad because you're dead, right? That's the reality of it. But the fact of the matter is that we have to speak in a way that exudes honesty, exudes integrity. When I say try, I'm right away, I've given up my integrity. Because, and the reason I use try, oh, no, I tried to be there on time. Today, if I was here at 215 you said two o'clock, I'd be out of integrity. Well, don't blame me, I tried. And I expect you not to blame me because I tried. And yet here you are, a whole production crew, waiting for me 15 minutes at thousands of dollars per hour. How does that work in business? It doesn't. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nothing works without integrity. Nothing. Not relationships, not businesses, not the way you produce film. Everything is based on integrity. That cameraman must do his job. Well, I tried. That ain't going to work. You're fired. We get into someone that knows what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how businesses work. That's how they succeed, by maintaining their integrity. So right at the beginning of the semester, that's what I teach. There is no try. And we're going to create a culture around there's no try. And I do not allow people to use the word try in my, in my classroom. And then experiment with it. Don't use it. See how it works. You'll find any time that you don't use it, your, your communication becomes more positive, more upbeat, more honest, more authentic, and people will trust you more. But if you go around trying, you're bound to fail and fail miserably. So that's where we start. And then we start with the basics, how not to get punched, grabbed, or kicked. Those are the three basics. Well, actually, that's the, the first basic is to avoid. Don't get punched, grabbed, or kicked. Because if the first basic of any form of martial art, and I don't really care if you call it martial arts, any, any fighting system, the first thing you have to do is learn how not to get, how not to get punched, how not to get kicked, how not to get grabbed, which then extends to don't get stabbed, shot, and hit with a brick, right? Because if you can't avoid getting hit, then you got got. You got stabbed, you got punched, you got hit. You got, and sometimes it only takes one punch. Most people don't understand. You get punched one time, it could kill you. 
So my fundamental basic is number one is avoid avoidance. Number two, control. Control yourself, number one, and then control your opponent. Control the weapon, right? And then once you get control of the opponent or your weapon, then what do you do with it? So that's cho choice. And like I said, a lot of people don't have the courage to make a choice. They get stuck in indecision. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I do it or should I not do it? The gift of fear. They got stuck. That's when it, fear becomes a curse, right? Mm -hmm. So if you abide by uh, the th my three basics, you train yourself in avoidance first, getting main by maintaining control of yourself and your opponent, and then having the power of choice, which in this in, in something you probably don't understand yet is that this happens in three moments. I'm not talking about three seconds or three 10 minute sections. Avoid, control, choose. Three moments in time. Avoid getting stabbed, control the knife, choose what you're gonna do. Stab them back or don't, or run. So that's, the, that's what I develop in our, our semester. And if I can take the entire semester on how to get a student to communicate more authentically, be honest, maintain their integrity, be on time to class, do the work, and then uh, build skills, a skill base, they come out of my classes much more powerful than they, they came to me. Thank you so much for coming in today. It was a pleasure to have this interview with you. You're very welcome. I, I hope more people will be drawn to our program. We need them. I'm Kempton Carter, and this is ECTV. Thanks for watching. I'm going to strike you on the head here, right hand here, left hand goes on my head, so you get me off balance, push me down, take that weapon, get from here, drop it, drop it, hold me down with the gun.